These are notes from section 10.3. Way too wide of a tip. And this is on chords. And there's quite a bit of math here involved, guys, with the Pythagorean theorem. Here's a couple of theorems, first of all. Congruent chords have congruent arcs. For example, if you have a chord here that measures six, and you have a chord on the other side, let's say over here, that measures six, then arc AB and arc MC would also be equal or congruent. So if the chords are congruent, six and six, then the arcs are congruent and vice versa. So what I mean by vice versa is this. If we have, uh, let's go arc XY, connected here, and down over here, we have arc RT, so arc XY is congruent to arc RT, then segment or chord TR is also congruent to arc XY. Okay, so congruent chords have congruent arcs. Next one, rule two, is this. Um, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects chord and arc. Example, here's a chord, here's the center. If this is perpendicular, that's not a full diameter, just a part, but any little piece that comes from the center that's perpendicular to it, it would bisect this arc, it's called arc MP, and segment MP. So if segment MP were equal to 10, and arc MP were equal to, let's say, 80 degrees, this piece here would bisect both the arc, call this point X, and maybe this little point right in there called T. MX then, arc MX, would equal or be congruent to arc X, uh, XP. Erase. So, if the arc were 80, then both these arcs would be 40 and 40. Likewise, segment-wise, MT, that chord, the whole chord was 10, so MT would be half of that or 5, and likewise, XP would equal 5. <coughs> so, any radii, diameter, etc., that's perpendicular to a chord, bisects the chord, and also bisects the arc in which it comes from, okay? Number three, rule says this, congruent chords are equidistant from the center. And this is the type you get most of your problems from. A lot of Pythagorean theorem stuff here. So what that means is this. Congruent chords are the same length from the center. So something like this. If chord RM is 8 and chord AC 
is also 8. Then their distances from the center would have to be the same, like 4 and 4. So the distances of congruent chords are always going to be the same distance from the center. So the length of the chords, if they're the same, have to be equidistant from the center. So there are three types of questions you're going to see. I want to call them type 1, type 2, and type 3. Here's type 1. It's called find the chord length. Pardon my handwriting guys on the stylus. Uh, so we have a circle. And we have this chord, we'll call it M. And we have a center of the circle here. And we know the distance is 3. And that the radius is 6. That's what you're given. Change colors. We want to find what is M equal to. Not much information there. But if the radius is 6, draw in the radius. Right there, 6. So then by Pythagorean theorem, I could find this little piece x. 3 squared plus 6 squared is 9 plus 36, otherwise known as 45. So then x would equal square root 45. Sorry. Square root 45, otherwise known as, that would be 9 times 5 or 3 root, fi uh, three root 5. So uh, this would be 3 times, um, sorry, um, 9 times 5 or 3 root 5. That's X. But M is two of those. So since M is two X's from the sketch, then the length of the chord would have to be 2 times 3 root 5, otherwise known as 6 root 5. And you could also give me a decimal there if you like. So in this case, they were given uh, the length from the center, 3, and I gave you the radius, 6. That gives you three sides of a right triangle up here. And then by using Pythagorean theorem, you find the little side, half of it here, which is uh, 3 root 5, and then you double that by multiplying it by uh, 2. So you get 6 root 5 for the other part. Okay. Type 2. Uh, a type 2 circle. We have to find the radius. Here's what we're given. So we have a chord down here that's 16. And we know that its distance from the center is, oh, 5. We want to know what the radius is. Call it R, radius. Well, we know from the previous rule that if it's perpendicular to a chord, it breaks it in half. So if the whole thing is 16, that would be 8. So then 5 squared plus 8 squared equals R squared. 25 plus 64 is, what, 89? So R squared is 89, so R would be the square root of 89. So in that one, you are given the distance from the center and the length of the chord, find the radius. In this case, it would be root 89. Okay, type 3. Type 3 is find the distance from the center. Here's a circle. Well, that's a good one. Let's say this chord is length 20. And I know the radius is 16. So I could draw the radius this way. I want to know how far away Here's what I'm looking for in red. I'm looking for X. Well, that seems impossible. But what you got to realize is you can draw the radius anywhere you like. 
So rather than drawing the radius there, let's draw the radius over here. <coughs> Excuse me. That makes much more sense. So now with this right triangle up here, if the whole thing is 20, this piece here would have to be 10, that little piece. So then we have x squared plus 10 squared equals 16 squared. So x squared is 16 squared minus 10 squared, which is 256 minus 100, or 156. So then x squared is equal to 156. x then is the square root of 156. And once again, you could use a decimal there. That's the same thing as 2 times the root 39, which is approximately 12, 12 and a half. All right? So I gave you all three types. Find the distance, find the radius, and find the length of the chord. Now after watching this, please go to the book, and it's already in Canvas. I want you to do page 549 in the textbook, numbers 3 through 18, and number 21. Okay, that'll be due on Friday, and so you have the quiz on Delta Math. You have this due by Friday, and that is it for this week. If you've got questions, I have daily office hours at 3 o'clock, although I do have some other meetings going on, but feel free to chime in and ask a question anytime between 3 and 3.45. Take care.